In Creo Parametric, you can use mechanisms functionality in order to create gear connections between components. Here is the assembly that I am going to create. I'm going to click on the drag components. You can see as I move the primary gear, it is causing the other two gears to move. Let's create this assembly. I'm going to go to File, New, and change this to Assembly. I'm going to call this my Gears Generic. And instead of using the default template, I want to make sure that I am using my metric template. Template. Let me confirm my units. Let me go to the properties dialog box. Yep, I'm using metric units. If I wanted to change that, I could click the change button and choose one of the other different provided unit systems. But that is good. Let me close out of here and I'm going to turn on my datum plane display and my axis display. And so we have our default datums from the assembly. Normally I would assemble those different gear components to other components, structural components, but I don't have those. So I'm going to create a skeleton model with the reference geometry that I need. Let's click on the create button and here in create component, I have skeleton model selected as the type. It's giving me a file name. I'm going to use that. Let's click the OK button. And here is my metric start part. That is good. Let me click the OK button. And now my skeleton model is created and it's made the first component in the assembly even before my default datums. And I'm not going to use my default datum, so I'm going to select them and then hide them. And so, for assembling my different components, I need some geometry in my skeleton model. I can click on it, and then from the mini toolbar, I will use the activate command. So, it's just like being in part mode, except I've got the assembly open, and any features that I create will end up going in the skeleton. I've taken some measurements, and so I know where I need to create some different references for my mechanism connections, primarily my pin connections. I'm going to create a datum plane offset from the datum plane called front. So I will select front and then from the mini toolbar, I can click on the plane command. From the tooltip, you can see that that is the keyboard shortcut P. And I've got it created. I know that my first plane, I want offset a distance of four. To make things easy to understand, I am going to rename this to my reduction plane. That will be the plane that I'll use to assemble the reduction gear. Let's click the OK button. And let's also select front and I'm going to create one other datum plane. I picked it out of the model tree just because it's already starting to get a little cluttered in the graphics area. Let's change this offset here. I want this to be a value of 32. And from the Properties tab, I'm going to rename this to the Final Plane. It will be the plane for assembling the final gear. Let's click the OK button. And I need a couple of axes for rotating the component. So let me select the datum plane called Top, hold down the Control key, and select the datum plane called Right. And from the mini toolbar, I'm going to create an axis. Be aware when you use this method, it's going to complete the feature without opening up any dialog box since I provided a enough references. Let me change this. I'm going to call this my main axis. And I need one other axis in here. Let's create it. Let's see. It's going to be normal to that datum plane front. I'm going to select the datum plane out of the model tree. Then here is the axis command. And for my offset references, let me hold down the right mouse button to get to my offset references collector. I'm going to dimension it from the datum plane called right. Hold down the control key and top as my second reference. And the distance I want between that is going to be 28. Oops, wrong direction. Let's change that to negative 28. There we go. And the properties tab, I will use that to rename this to my reduction axis and click the OK button. So now I have the necessary planes and axes for assembling those different gear components with pin connections. I'm done creating geometry in the skeleton. Let's see, there are a few datum that I'm not going to need, so let's hide them. Again, I'm just trying to make my screen easy as possible to work with. There we go. 
And if I go to the View tab, here's the command that allows me to turn on the display of the axes names. For assembling the first component, let me go back to the Model tab. I need to deactivate the skeleton model. So you can use Control A to activate the assembly. And you'll notice that I have my standard assembly mode toolbar. Let's click the Assemble button. And for the first component that I'm going to assemble, it's going to be the primary gear. And I've got it displayed in its own separate window. This is going to be a pin connection. So I will go to the drop down list that says user defined and then choose pin. A pin connection allows one rotational degree of freedom. And you can pick cylindrical surfaces or axes that you want to align. Let's select the main axis and then this axis in the part. For eliminating translation, I am going to use the datum plane called front and this particular surface. Now my component is facing the wrong direction, so I can use the flip command here to get it facing the right way. My connection definition is complete, so you can click the green check mark or middle mouse button in order to complete placement of the component. I no longer need the datum plane called front, so let me hide it. Again, I'm just trying to make everything as easy to see as possible. For assembling my second component, let's hit the assemble button. And the second component is going to be my reduction gear. This again is going to be a pin connection. Let me select the reduction axis and this particular axis over here. That is good. For translation, we're going to use the plane called reduction plane that I created and this flat surface in the part. And there you can see how the components are assembled just where I want them to be. Let's hit the check mark. And for the final component that I need in here, let's hide that plane. Let's click the assemble button. I'm going to grab my final gear shaft and let's select for from the drop down list. Let's choose the pin connection again. And we're going to use the main axis and I can grab it out of the model tree. And then this axis in the part. And for eliminating translation, let's select this datum plane that I created and this flat surface in the part. Again, I had taken some measurements beforehand, so I knew exactly where to place my datums to get my components in the right location. So that is good. Let's turn off the display of our datums in order to reduce the screen clutter. I actually don't even need the skeleton anymore, so I can select on it and use the hide command so that it's not going to show any of the geometry in there. If I click on the drag components, you'll notice that each component just has one rotational degree of freedom, but they are not connected to one another. So this is where I need a gear pair connection between them. To create my different gear pairs, we're going to use Mechanisms mode. Let's click on Applications and then Mechanism. And in the ribbon here is the Gears command. Here is the name if you want to change it. This is Gear Pair 1. From the Type drop-down list, you have some special dynamic gears like Spur, Bevel, Worm, and Rack and Pinion. But this is just going to be a generic gear. For Gear 1, let's select this motion axis. And for the pitch circle diameter, if I go to the analysis tab, I can go to the measure drop down. I want to measure the diameter real quick and I can see that, oh, this is about 12. So I happen to know that the actual pitch circle diameter in this case should actually be 11. It's a little smaller than the outside diameter. Let's go back to the mechanism tab over here. And if I go to the Gear 2 tab, now I can select the motion axis for the component that's going to be driven by that. Here we have the pitch circle diameter. And I did a measurement earlier, so I know that this one should be a value of 46. If I go to the Properties tab, we can see that the pitch circle diameters are being used to calculate the gear ratio. But you could change it to user defined if you wanted to use different values. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And there you can see the icon that represents the gear pair connection. Let's click on the drag components command. And I just want to do a sanity check to make sure that they are moving the right way. And they are. 
So that is good. Let me hit the middle mouse button and then close the drag dialog box. That is my first gear pair. Let's create a second gear pair to have the reduction gear drive the final gear. And again, gear pair two, type generic. Let's select the motion axis for the reduction gear. And the diameter in this case over here, I happen to know that that is value of 12 from having done a measurement like I showed you. Let's go to the gear two tab. And this is going to be the motion axis for the final gear. And this particular one has a pitch circle diameter of 46. So that is good. And again, properties tab, I know don't need to change anything on here. Let's click the OK button. And now when I go to drag components, I can see how moving the primary gear is causing the other two gears to rotate. So be aware, it's not actually one tooth driving another tooth. It's simulating it, the motion of the gears with these gear pair connections. That's good. Let's close the drag dialog box. And if I wanted to create an analysis, I can define a motor in the model. Let me select the first pin connection. And from the menu that opens up, we can create a servo motor. The driven quantity right now is angular position, but I prefer angular velocity. If I go to the profile details tab, I'm going to use just a constant velocity. Well, you can see from the drop down list, you could also do ramp, cosine, cycloidal, parabolic, polynomial, table, and user defined. Let's just do one rotation per second. That's 360 degrees per second. And that's all I need for my motor. Let's hit the check mark. Now to define an analysis, I can click on the analyses command in the mechanism tree. And then we have an icon to create a new analysis. You could also do it from the mechanism analysis command in the ribbon. You can change the name if you want. The default type of analysis is a position analysis. That is the pre-Pro Engineer 2001 solver. Uh, it's not actually a true kinematic solver, so I prefer kinematic. Be aware that position is used in situations where you will have geometry motors instead. And just a quick explanation. A position analysis will calculate the locations of the components at each time step during the analysis and then try to assemble the components with the kinematic analysis it does actually a true kinematic solution and we'll have it run for 10 seconds uh, frame rate let's crank this up a little bit and now i can click the run button and you can see how it is spinning around in here that is good let's click the ok button and here underneath playbacks, if I wanted to, I could select on the analysis definition and hit the play button in order to get the nice animation dialog box where you can hit play. This allows you to control the speed uh, that it is showing on the computer screen if the run was too fast for you to see. Let's hit the stop button out of there. From the animate dialog box, you also have a capture button. And this capture button allows you to generate different kinds of movies or images. So for example, I could do an MPEG movie or an AVI movie. You could also generate images like JPEGs, TIFFs, and BMPs. Here we have the resolution. You also have the ability to use Creo Parametrics rendering engine in order to render the movie that you are generating. Let's click cancel out of there and close out of there. So again, now I have my standard gear pair. Let me close out of mechanism mode. It's saying that, hey, wait, you ran an analysis. If you exit out, you're going to end up losing that. Ah, no problem. It doesn't take long to run, so I'm not going to save it. And back here in standard assembly mode, you can see that we have in our model tree, the three different components in here. And they've got a little symbol called a glyph next to them in the model tree that has a dot inside of a box. And that glyph indicates that we have mechanism connections. You can also see the motor as an assembly level feature inside of here. And if I click on the drag components, we can also test the motion while we are in standard mode. 
and also you can expand snapshots if you wanted to create different snapshots if the actual position was important to you and also use this button to make the different snapshots available for use in drawings uh, and also available in Creo View. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.